and my playing was really appalling, but it worked. Your next choice, Brian, has rather more than two chords. Yes, it's. Uh, it's uh, I don't think I could ever play that. <laughs> but at some point, I started spending a lot of time in Sussex, very close to where Elgar worked and where he wrote this piece, maybe a mile from where I've lived ever since. And I'm kind of in London most of the time, and it's a great place to make music. But I like to retreat to the countryside to get a bit of nature when I can. And this cello concerto, it reminds me of the fields and the woods and my neighborhood. <laughs> Music from the first movement of the Cello Concerto in E minor by Edward Elgar, performed by Jacqueline Dupre, with the London Symphony Orchestra conducted by Sir John Barbirolli. Stirring stuff, isn't it? Uh, it's incredible. Yeah, when they yeah. get right up to that high note, both on the cello and on the orchestra, it's yeah, overpowering. Yeah. The film of her playing, it, she's so inside the music. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Your cover art often features models. Carrie Ann Muller appeared on the first, and Jerry Hall, who you then dated, appeared on the fifth album, Siren. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think having models um, instead of the band worked so well? Well, we preferred being behind the camera than in front of it. We thought, well, let's, let's have something beautiful on the cover, not just the band standing in a, <laughs> in a kind of dark alley or cobble street which was the Vogue, really, at the time. Yeah, so uh, it seemed to work. It seemed to go with the music. There was something about the visual sensibility matched the musical sensibility. Actually, you brought in a fashion designer, Anthony Price. Oh, yes. I'd met this guy, Anthony Price, who was a star graduate of the Royal College of Art Fashion School at a party, actually. And he became a great friend, subsequently, and helped with all the early album covers. <laughs> and when I was young, I had this LP called The Romantic Music of Tchaikovsky. On the cover was a beautiful woman. Not many people know this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was a kind of inspiration, I think, for the first album cover. I must have shown this picture to Anthony Price. Anyway, Anthony made this outfit for Carrie Ann. Mm. It has the same color tonality. More jazz now. Ah, I think I said that the first uh, concert I went to was Chris Barber's Jazz Band, and this is essentially Chris Barber's Jazz Band with Ken Corleo leading it on this record, uh, the trumpet player. He'd gone to New Orleans to work, and when he came back, he was fated by the, the trad jazz world as having you know, really lived the life out there. <laughs> and they did this record, which I, I really like it. There was a great clarinet player called Monty Sunshine. He plays in this, <laughs> and Chris Barber on trombone and Ken Collier on trumpet. It's the first time I heard my name on the radio was through this record. I, I requested it on a radio show, and uh, they played the record for me. Yeah, my name <laughs> on the radio. I couldn't believe it. Well, and probably um, in due course, yeah, your name and appeared when play, people play, requested your playing it again. <laughs> here it is. It's called Going Home. <laughs> I like the way they all bounce off each other. Don't yeah, you? wonderful. <laughs> Going Home, composed by Ken Collier and performed by Ken Collier's Jazz Man. Brian Ferry, alongside your career with Roxy Music, you established a solo career and began making covers of music that you admired. Why did you want to do that in particular? Uh, it was quite simple, really. That after the second Roxy album... I just wanted to make another album straight away. I really loved the process of making the second album. That's when we really started feeling our way around the studio and you know trying to figure out how to make a record, you know, to construct a record. I was so enamored of the process. I, I just wanted to make another record straight away, but I didn't have any more songs left over from the second album. So I, with John Porter, who played in the band, Roxy on the second album, the bass player, I said, well, uh, let's make a record of covers, rather like an old album of Elvis Presley or Frank Sinatra or Bing Crosby or Billie Holiday, my favorite singer probably. They weren't songwriters, but they sang covers of existing songs. And uh, so I chose a dozen songs. One of them was the title track, These Foolish Things, which is an old you know, song from the 30s. Mm. And the other things are from the 50s and 60s. It was a holiday away from my writing then. <laughs> yeah. And the first track we did 
that we cut was probably the best cover I've ever done. It's called uh, Hard Rain's Gonna Fall, Bob Dylan. And uh, we did it with a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> well, you went on to bring out an entire album of Dylan in 2007 called Dylanesque. Mm-hmm. So he's obviously quite an important figure oh, yeah. for you. Oh, he's a great lyricist, you know, mm. wonderful words and uh, great imagery. And there's a lot of feeling in his writing and imagination, you know. As a singer, you want to sing good words, and there are plenty there. <laughs> <laughs> How did your parents take to your success? What did ah. they make of it? <laughs> oh, they were thrilled, yeah. They, uh, they couldn't really believe it, because they were very humble, quiet folk, and uh, the idea of somebody you know, sort of being in the public eye was kind of a bit weird. Mm. And uh, they were thrilled, because they wanted me to have a better life. <laughs> <laughs> How do you set about writing your own material? Does it come as a process of jamming or what? No, no. It usually starts on my own, probably in the evening, night, you know, <laughs> on the piano. I don't play that often. When I do play, uh, then it feels like a treat to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the germ of a song will come out of that, and then I'll listen to it sometime later, maybe years later, on a cassette or whatever, and then say, mm, maybe I can turn this into something and take it to the studio and start interacting with other players. Kurt Weill next. I like his music very much. One of my favourite European singers was Lottie Lenya, his wife, singing Kurt Weill. But this is different. This is Walter Houston, the actor, father of John Houston, the great film director. And the lyrics were Maxwell Anderson, September song. September Song, composed by Kurt Weill for the 1938 musical Knickerbocker Holiday and performed there by Walter Houston. Brian Ferry Roxy music split up in 1982. Was that a natural evolution or a very painful process? Uh, Well, we'd made our most successful album, in fact, Avalon, and then we did a long tour, and after that I kind of didn't do any more band records. By then, I was working with so many different people that it seemed natural to just amalgamate the two careers. And so Boys and Girls was a solo record, although it followed in this stylistically very much in the Avalon mode. One of the constant themes in your music, and indeed in most popular music, is love and its costs viewed from different angles. Mm-hmm. And you certainly had your share of difficult times, haven't you, as we all do? Well, uh, yeah, music, uh, it's a a universal language, romance and music, and uh, I guess the music I do tends to be more one-to-one. It's not me kind of shouting from the rooftops type music. It's it's more uh, intimate than that, I think, and I tend to like the reflective stuff, and it's kind of, yeah... One to one. This feeling of tragedy enveloping one is very much suggested by the next music, which is Mahler's Kinder Toten Leader, songs about the loss of children. And in fact, his wife was so worried about him setting it that she thought he was tempting fate. It's very, very soulful music, and I wish I knew more about Mahler, um, but I intend to try and discover more as I get older. Mm. There are certain composers who have a melodic flair that that speaks to me and uh, there's a certain kind of yearning in their music which I like very much. Now the sun is about to rise as brightly as if no misfortune had happened in the night. There's such a sense of longing and yearning in those long lines, especially as sung there by Janet Baker. Beautiful voice, no? Mm. Yeah, great. That was the first of Mahler's Kindertoten Lieder, performed, as I said, by Janet Baker with the Halle Orchestra, conducted once again by Sir John Barbirolli. Brian, in 2022, you reunited with Roxy Music for the 50th anniversary tour. Was it fun to get back on stage with your old oh, mates? Was, yeah, <laughs> terrific. It was great. And yeah, I wish we could have done more dates. We did a tour in America and then three dates here in uh, the UK. And I enjoyed it very much. It was great to have play those songs with some of the original guys. The audience was marvellous and... It was quite moving to reunite for that. For your retrospective album, you've collaborated with the poet Amelia Barrett on a dance track called Star. 
Is working with younger people fascinating now? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Energising. <laughs> and I love the enthusiasm. The new work with Amelia Barrett, the writer, uh, well, she's an artist who writes beautifully. It's been great the last couple of years, actually. We've been collaborating on these things which will see the light of day next year. And, yeah, it's exciting for me to work with young talent like that. Sadly, we have to come to your final piece, Brian Ferry. Oh, yes. So what is it? Well, I like the sound of the guitar very much, and I've worked with lots of great guitar heroes and some unsung heroes but this is a master of the instrument it's Django Reinhardt and I'll see you in my dreams very influential guitarist because of him that Julian Bream really took up the guitar oh really now yeah Ah. Uh, and he always said to me amazing that this man had his hand so badly burnt in an accident the two fingers didn't work incredible you know so it's just a man who totally mastered his instrument and played such beautiful lyrical lines and this is a beautiful song and it's very romantic I'll see you in my dreams Brian Ferry, thank you so much Pleasure I'll see you in my dreams by Django Reinhardt the final choice of Michael Barclay's guest on today's Private Passions Brian Ferry, the co-founder of Roxy Music The programme was produced by Claire Walker